Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 765 of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's episode, I'll be speaking with Jennifer Stone. Jennifer is an adult living with type 1 diabetes, she's a nurse, and you may also know her as an actress. Jennifer played Harper Finkel on Wizards of Waverly Place, and she's here today to tell us about her life with type 1 diabetes, and I have to find out how she became a nurse and a bunch of other stuff. I genuinely had a terrific time speaking with Jennifer, and I believe you're going to love this episode. She is really just a lovely person. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician or a wizard before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you're a U.S. resident who has type 1 diabetes or is the caregiver of someone with type 1, you could complete the survey at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box in fewer than 10 minutes and support people living with type 1. It would also help you and the podcast. It's absolutely HIPAA compliant, completely anonymous, and simple to do. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. This episode of the Juice Box podcast is sponsored by Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitoring system. See the speed, direction, and number of your blood sugar in real time right on your phone with Dexcom. Go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box to learn more or to find out if you're eligible for a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6. Today's episode is also sponsored by the InPen from Medtronic Diabetes, and we're going to be talking today about Medtronic's Blue Balloon Campaign, which runs from September 26th to November 30th, 2022. Every time you use the hashtag Blue Balloon Challenge and tag Medtronic Diabetes in your post, Medtronic is going to make a $5 donation up to $100,000 to the Life for a Child organization. And at the end of this episode, I'll tell you a little more about Life for a Child. It's time to talk to Jennifer. So put on your crazy, funky, junky hat and let's get started. Can we start? Are you good? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, great. She sounds terrific. So Jennifer, this is a really uh, casual podcast. Normally I have people introduce themselves and then we start talking, but that seems kind of silly because your name will be in the title. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of launch right in and ask my first question, if that's okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Before I start, as I said, I was going to launch in. This is going to be terrific for you because I don't know a damn thing about Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to ask you any of the questions that everyone asks you all the time. Although I have three cringe questions that are at the end that I will ask you at the very end. Oh, I love a cringe question. Okay. All right. Well, the last one. I also really appreciate your candor. That's really nice. Well, here's the here's the real compliment, though. I mean, I'm 51. Okay. My daughter's 18. My son's 22. I have never sat mm. down and consciously watched an episode of Wizards of Waverly Place. But I bet you I've seen countless episodes of them pieces at a time i know the song like if i heard the song i'd start dancing like like the whole thing yeah. but i've never yeah. sat and watched it so i think that's a real um it's a real kind of great thing actually to have such an imprint on people it would be a little odd if you like after your kids went to sleep watched it by yourself it'd be a little strange my wife was like do you want to like get a glass of wine or watch wizards and i was like no we'll, we'll definitely throw on the disney channel yeah, yeah that, that would definitely be strange <laughs> so how old were you when you're diagnosed with type one I was 20. 20. And were there any signs or other people in your family extended with autoimmune issues? Well, my mom, so come to find out, because at the time I, I, they didn't know this. So they told my mom incorrectly that because uh, she had gestational diabetes and they told her, oh, it's fine. Once you have, like give birth, it'll go away for you. It won't be a problem for the kid. But actually, um, I'm not going to give exact numbers because I don't know the, the statistical data there, but um, you're more likely to get type two as with gestational diabetes and your, um, your kid is more likely to get type one. Did that happen to your so, mom? And we both, mm -hmm, yeah. yep, she got type two and she actually found out because I don't know if she would have ever really realized it, at least not as quickly if it wasn't for my type one diagnosis, cause it made her more aware right. of some of the signs and symptoms. And for me, I, I, I wasn't your 
standard type one. Um, cause I know a lot of people when they first diagnosed, they lose a lot of weight. I didn't, I gained like 60 pounds in three months. Mm -hmm. I was super tired from the most basic things. I lost my, like vision was so blurred. They used to say that at auditions are like, she just doesn't feel like she's connecting. I'm like, cause I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't connect to you if I can't see you. Um, but yeah, so those were some of the things that I experienced that was obviously a, a red flag that something was going on. So, um, so that was when I started going to see doctors to try to figure out what was up and found yeah. out it was type one. You'd be surprised at how many people I speak to whose um, health issue ends up imp impacting people around them kind mm -hmm. of very favorably. Uh, e even stuff like people with type one who end up having kids with type one who will tell me that I never really took great care of myself until my child had it. And then I started thinking, well, why am I doing such a great job for them? I could be doing it for myself too, or, or on and on. It's also, I think they see the, um, I think they see the change and the increase in technology and it kind of pulls them along as well. And they think, oh, you know what, maybe I'll wear a pump or I'll get a pen or I'll do something. I've been shooting with these needles for 20 years, you know? Yeah. So. And that's, what's great about the diabetes community is it's such a resource of just people sharing their experiences. Cause diabetes is not a one size fits all condition. I mean, everybody's experience is really different. And so, you know, things like the end pen work really well for me, but may not work for somebody else, but you're never going to know until you try. Yeah. And that's, it's, that's diabetes is a constant trial and error trying to see, you know, how you can best balance those blood sugars throughout the day. I like to say that you don't want to wake up one day and realize you're using like methods from 10 years ago and you're like, wait, what's everyone doing now? You, you know, like don't switch just totally. to switch, but if there's better ways then, and they're more helpful for you then that's great. Um, okay. So you were diagnosed when you're 20, you're done. Are you done acting at that point? Are you acting less? Are you still trying to act? Like, I don't understand how you get from acting to nursing. I guess, is my question. <laughs> no one does. It's okay. okay. Nobody gets that job. Um, so I took a break for a bit, um, to focus on my health and make sure my health was okay. And then, and then continued that break to go to nursing school. But no, my, my, I've loved acting since I was six years old. So I was, my plan was never to leave and I have it. I just juggle the two, um, which is easier some days than others. I was going to say, like, how do you make that? Like when you get hired as a nurse, I'm assuming at a hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do the, yeah, I'm in do, the emergency room. Do you say to them, Hey, I like, I might not be here for three days. Cause I, I got two scenes in a thing or something, or how does that work exactly? <laughs> I mean, it, it works with, cause I mean, thankfully I work three days a week, 12 hours a day. And, um, and so, and sometimes just the, with the way you can finagle kind of scheduling and things like that, I work with both my managers at the hospital and my, my manager, um, in acting. Yeah. And, um, we just work kind of on scheduling. Everyone's really, really great about that. And how you are know. you, how are your blood sugars during 12 hour shifts? They, my pancreas knows when we're going to get an influx of patients. I swear. <laughs> Cause we have like times where like, it's more likely that it's going to get busier. Mm -hmm. So like maybe around like nine, 10 AM, I'll get a spike. And then around 4 PM, I'll get another spike. Um, uh, but it's a lot better than when I did night shift. Night yeah. shift was, oh my goodness, that, that, that complete flip flop of your circadian rhythm Processing. did not was not agreeable with my system. So you're using an impen. So you were in a CGM as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you see a spike with adrenaline? With, with cortisol usually. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you get, I'm like, really cortisol sensitive. That's interesting. Do you bolus for it or do you work through it? Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. Oh no, no, I have to bolus for it. And that's where like the impen is so great is because it takes that math out of doing it. That sort of mental math that most diabetics have to do yeah. all throughout the day. You just, it's this like smart pen that you plug into an app you plug in your blood sugar. It says, this is what you take. You take it really quickly and then get back with your day, no. which on shifts with nursing is like valuable. Had you tried a pump prior? I did. It just, again, like I was talking about, you know, some things work for some diabetics and not for others. And the pump just didn't agree with me. Um, it, 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 I never got the full three days out of it. And also too, I, I'm really clumsy. I would get the wire stuck on everything. <laughs> so that didn't help either. Um, so between those two things, it just wasn't the right method for me. I'm going to bring up uh, for people listening, because I don't think enough people do this. I think you're wearing a medical ID bracelet, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. that's cool. It really is because it's hard to get people. You tell them how important it is and they just kind of won't do it. So you see enough people in the emergency room that don't wear them and then 
you know, things are not like, we just don't have all the information. So they'll come in completely out of it, not wearing one. We can't get it on their phone either. And so we were basically just like guessing with what's going on with them. Right. So you see that enough times. Yeah. It makes it a pretty easy decision to wear one. What would you say? Well, I guess let me ask you this first. When you're diagnosed, it's a it's a strange age because you're an adult, but you're not. You know what yeah. I mean? Does someone help it threw you? a lot the, of people. Yeah. Does somebody help you in the beginning? Like a parent? My mom. Yeah. I, my mom's my mom's a rock star. And she was really, she went into full mama bear mode when I had endos that weren't great, you mm-hmm. know, and, and found me endos that were. And, and I'm really thankful that like I have my endocrinologist now, which my mom helped me find um, at the time. Because at 20, I mean, you're still you're like yeah. barely an adult. Like you, you're still figuring out how to pay a bill, much mm-hmm. less, you know, deal with a chronic condition. I think your brain, um, your brain's still jelly until your early twenties. I think they say you're not, you're I think, not yeah, what is it like 25 yeah. before your like frontal cortex is like fully developed. <laughs> how old are you now? I'm 29, 29. So you've been doing this for quite some time. Have your mm-hmm. goals, um, for your range and for your A1C, like your outcome goals, have they changed over time or have they been pretty similar? They've been pretty similar. Um, but the thing that I think has changed the most for me is how, cause I I'm, I'm a perfectionist in recovery is my like ongoing joke and diabetes is not a great condition to have for any perfectionist because there's so much that's out of your control. You can do everything perfectly and it doesn't matter. So the thing that's changed for me is not those numbers, but what's changed for me is my understanding with myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to, you know, to look at my blood sugars and, and bolus when I need to, and try to be as on top of it as I can be. But if it still doesn't get to that perfect range numbers, whatever, I can know I did everything I, I could. Yeah. And, and that's enough. That's okay. Yeah. I find that if your basal is set, well, if you understand how to bolus for your food, if you understand the Mm -hmm. glycemic load and, you know, impact of, of the things that you're eating and you don't abide a high blood sugar if you look at a high and just go oh it's fine instead you kind of like knock it back on again yeah you know pre bolus your meals it's probably an a1c in the sixes if you if you do those sorts of things and it doesn't have to always be 80 90 100 it's for that the outcome to exist and yeah, yeah very true and then you balance sort of the the psychological aspects of it as well and don't end up making yourself crazy over it okay so what i mean why did you want to be a nurse Living with diabetes is a constant balancing act. I mean, imagine doing all the normal things every day that you do while keeping a balloon up in the air. Medtronic launched the Blue Balloon Challenge in 2021 so that we could drive more understanding of what it's like to live with diabetes. If you take part in the challenge, you can show support for the millions living with diabetes and help others to learn about the effort required to manage the condition. To take part in the Blue Balloon Challenge, All you have to do is post a photo or video of yourself doing an activity while bouncing a blue balloon up in the air. Then just use the hashtag blue balloon challenge and tag Medtronic Diabetes in your post. And if you think about it, tag me as well, because I'd love to see what you're doing. When you do that, your post will count towards the Life for a Child donation, and your post will send $5 to Life for a Child. Medtronic believes in developing better care for everyone with diabetes, which is why they've partnered with Life for a Child and they're working together for a brighter future. Life for a Child is currently supporting 34,000 young people in 44 countries. They provide essential supplies, including insulin, syringes, and blood glucose monitoring equipment to children in underserved communities around the globe. So come on, you love being on the internet. Take a video or a picture of yourself keeping that balloon up in the air, tag Medtronic Diabetes, and don't forget the hashtag Blue Balloon Challenge. Every time someone puts up a post tagging Medtronic and using our hashtag, $5 goes to life for a child, up to $100,000. Wouldn't you like to be part of them getting $100,000? You can. To learn more about the Blue Balloon Challenge or Life for a Child, go to, oh, who gave me this link? Okay, hold on. MedtronicDiabetes.com forward slash blue dash balloon dash challenge to learn more. 
if you guys go to that link, Medtronic's going to know you listen to the podcast because, I mean, you couldn't possibly find it by mistake. MedtronicDiabetes.com forward slash blue dash balloon dash challenge. Head over now. The podcast is also being sponsored today by the Dexcom G6. You're going to go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box to learn more. Dexcom actually works with the in pen but that's not why i'm here to tell you about it uh hold on a second let me get to the link what are you what are you in a hurry i know you do want to get back to jennifer right dexcom.com forward slash juice box yep there it is dexcom.com forward slash juice box the dexcom g6 continuous glucose monitoring system zero finger sticks glucose readings right on your smart device customizable alerts and alarms all the stuff that you're supposed to say when you talk about the dexcom but here's the real skinny the real, I don't know a lot of 20s phrases about things. So here's the here's a scoop. I guess scoop would have been another one. The Dexcom shows you the rate of change of your blood sugar. How fast is it rising or falling, or is it stable? It shows you the blood sugar, like what number it is. And it has alarms to let you, the user, or people who are following you, you can let people follow you. Can you imagine this? Like for safety. Uh, or peace of mind or whatever, like your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, like anybody really who you want can follow you on an Android or iPhone. Listen, the Dexcom G6 is at the center of my daughter's care, and you will find it to be an indispensable tool in your life using insulin. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. That's what you need to know. Go find out right now if you're eligible for a free 10 day trial. I had both good and and bad experiences with healthcare providers. I mean, they're people, so you're going to find the good and the bad. So um, I, I got into it because I wanted to understand my body better. I was about to transition to um, a four-year for a psychology degree, and um, I completely recalibrated and, and started going after nursing because I wanted to understand my body better, and I wanted to make sure that patients felt seen in that worst time of not knowing. Cause it, to me, I think that's the worst is, is not knowing what's going on with your system and not having a plan and an answer and, and tools like the end pen to, to, you know, make your life easier while you're still figuring it out. So I wanted to be there for people as a resource in that interim time of not knowing and uncertainty that can be really scary. So why, why is the wrong way to get into this, but you'll, t- you'll take, <laughs> you'll take me at my, at my meeting for a second uh, in a second. Yeah. Why didn't you just double down in Hollywood and ruin yourself chasing things constantly? Like, what made you go after like a normal <laughs> thing? Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and are, are, like I know Seth Rogen makes pottery, but are you guys all doing something else that we don't know about? And it, like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> the normal ones, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, but what about your upbringing made you say, okay, well, now I'm going to go to college? Well, I mean, college was never not an option for me. I mean, my my parents. Um, I know both my mom and dad, um, my mom's dad had gone to college, but my dad's dad had not. And so he was the first one in his family to go to college. So it was very important for both of my parents, um, for my brother and I to go to school. So not getting a degree was never off the table. I was always going to get a degree. Um, but the thing with acting is like, I I love the art of it so much. Um, but the business can be really self-involved and I was never raised that way. My parents just raised me of like, get outside yourself. Like it does, it's not all about you. And so even when, even when my mom was on sets with me, you know, she made sure, sure I did things to stay grounded. And so, you know, to me, it's the perfect balance of, I get to act for me and I get to nurse for other people. And so that way it kind of keeps that sort of right. push pull between self and other really balanced. Well, it's, it's exemplary to be able to do that. I have incredibly limited yeah. experience, meaning that I once filmed an iPhone commercial and okay. I, I believe I was on the Katie Kirk show a couple of times. Uh, so I know those are weird uh, examples, but the strange thing is like during the commercial filming, I remember being nervous before it started mm-hmm. and I asked for, you know, just a bottle of something to drink. And sure. th- you're about to find out that I live on the East coast cause I can't say water. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> uh, so I asked the, whoever I asked and then ringing through these like headsets all over this big room where the talent needs water. 
And then people were running at me with bottles. Uh-huh. And I thought, well, this is how it's people unnatural. Go, oh, this is how people go crazy. It's unnatural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause you could feel yourself thinking, I could like this. Y- y- you know, like I could really like somebody chasing me around this way. Um, so anyway, I think it's kind of a big deal that you were able to to do that and probably uh, you know, a great uh uh insight into your parents too and your family. It's all my folks. It's yeah. all my parents. I am just, I count my lucky stars that I got the parents that I did because yeah. otherwise who knows? Well, so then how to, how to like level-headed people also be the people who started you acting when you were young? Like, where's that? Like, that was all, it was all me. You? It was all me. Like I, I, my brother, we joke that it's a hobby that got really out of control. And my mom, even to this day, like when it gets hard, she's like, you know, you can quit. And I'm like, I know, but I, I really love it. Um, Like it's, 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 it just makes me feel the most like me. And that's when, you know, you found something worth doing right. is when it makes you feel like the best version of yourself. And, and, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I got dragged to theater camp with my older brother and it like sparked my mind and, you know, I started doing it and I loved it. And I was the one that drove the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, my mom was never like, Oh, we should get you in showbiz. Like she was always the one being like, do you want to quit now? Can we go play soccer or something? <laughs> <laughs> I used to ask my kid that about sports. Like, are you sure you want to keep doing this? We could do something different. Yeah. Um, I, so I've been finding recently as I get older that I'm starting to believe that my memories, the ones that I think of as really strong memories are actually more tied to photographs that I have more access to. Okay. And I was wondering yeah. if you disproportionately see yourself as younger because there's so many images of you that way. I mean, I don't, to be honest, and this is why, like, I was joking with you before we got on about like me just talking to no one mm-hmm. is I, I try not to like look or think about myself as much as humanly possible being an actor in the age of social media. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, cause it's just, I don't find it healthy to like surround myself that much with the idea of myself or the image of myself. So I try to not avoid it, but it's just not the center of my universe. Um, but no, I mean, it, it's, I've always like, I hate the term old soul, but I've always felt like that because I grew up working on sets at a really young age with adults. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always felt older than I am, not an experience, but just in something within me. Um, but no, I definitely don't think of myself as, as younger just yeah. because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's I, so many, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, it's like looking at a high school yearbook. Like, I don't want to look at my high school yearbook and that's what those images are to me. You yeah, know, yeah. how about when people approach you? Like I'm assuming that you've walked into a room, someone's <laughs> arms half like ripped off and they go like, Oh my God, you're Harper <laughs> Finkel. Does that happen? It does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it happens. I mean, I, I pick my moments. Sometimes it's a moment where I can be like, yeah, that's me, you know, and it's nice because when somebody's having a really bad day, because people don't come to the ER when they're having a good day, you right. know, so if they are having a bad day, I can give them something to be excited about or something to be happy about. So that's really a gift. Um, but the times when I've had people that are, I'll just say not a hundred percent, they might be a little um, like mentally, uh, mm-hmm. oh, you know, oh altered. (laughs) Um, and, uh, when they like are hallucinating a bunch of things and they also include me in that and they're like, Oh, are you, you're from like, that's when I'm just like, no, that's not me. Let's focus on getting you better. And like, you should say, (laughs) but the anesthesiologist is the chimpanzee from BJ and the bear. So hold tight. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. I mean, they're seeing a lot of other things when that, that realization happens. So I'm just like, no, we're just gonna, Right. Like not the right time. It's a strange thing because I can imagine that people don't can can possibly not see you as people, but as things, right? And then yeah. you just show up in the most normal, like vulnerable situation in their life. And you're like, Yeah. No one makes a joke like, Do you have like a wand that you could fix this with or something like that? People love that one. Yeah, yeah. I would people imagine. love that one. They love I wore a lot of um like really like silly outfits on the show that were all like themed. So I would have like a watermelon themed outfit or something. Mm-hmm. So people usually ask me like where something that I wore is or so my, people love those too. My daughter is in um she's a freshman actually in um she's uh, doing fashion design at SCAD. And oh, um, yeah. yeah, and so she asked me to ask you if you had any input about those outfits or if you even liked them or if they were more not not you personally, but just for the character, I guess. No, I, I loved it for the character. Yeah. And and I it was never it kind of evolved naturally that they were themed. That was something that was never scripted. 
Um, I think I had like one outfit in my first episode that kind of had a theme to it. And then it just like exploded from there. And so me and the wardrobe department, um, who was incredible, they like handmade all of that. Cause where are you going to find like a meat dress, you know, right. unless you're Lady Gaga, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, so like they like handmade all of that. And, and, you know, I, it would be things like, oh, what if we, like, I love this necklace. Let's turn it into a whole thing. So it would mm-hmm. be cool from like a daisy necklace to being a whole full daisy thing. I have a flower pot on my head, like all of that. Yeah. Um, and I loved it because it made my job easier. It's a lot easier to make somebody laugh when you look crazy. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's, really cool. it's a lot easier. It made my, my job a lot easier and it was a lot of fun too. Yeah. Okay. So your, your mom helps you in the beginning, but. I'm assuming you have a job where you're kind of on your own a lot. You didn't have a CGM in the beginning, I would imagine, right? No, I didn't at the no. beginning. So I just... was doing like finger pricks and things like that, which was incredibly difficult. And I, I applaud anyone because I know not everybody is as lucky yeah. as I am to have the resources that I have. Um, so the people that have to use just, you know, your old school, like, you know, pin and needle method. Um it's really difficult to keep your blood sugars under control. So between the CGM and like having the end pen to be able to like knock it back, like you were saying, Mm -hmm. when it starts to get a little too high, um, that's when it's, it's a game changer for sure. So what about bringing it up in your personal life? So I don't know if you're dating or meeting new people (laughs) or or like going to a job. Do you, I mean, I'm assuming you don't run in and yell, I have diabetes. Like (laughs) how soon until you tell somebody? I mean, I, it's pretty, it comes up pretty early, um, just because I, I am not shy about bolusing. So like, I'll pull out my end pin, like at dinner and I know <laughs> I have a funny first date story about this. Um, so they find out pretty quickly cause they're asked, like, obviously the first question is what are you injecting yourself with? <laughs> um, but I, I was, I was priming it and I accidentally primed it in the wrong direction and I primed it like onto his food <laughs> and so he was horrified he was like um so what does this mean am i going to taste it what is this going to do and i was like well you might get a little like sweaty and like feel weak but just eat more and you'll you'll be fine like that's the worst that'll happen to you but it was very funny because we both had that that like oh no moment where we both like looked at each other and like watched it happen and yeah so i mean it comes up pretty early just because i'm not shy about bullying yeah do you think it's ever put an end to a relationship or do you think you've seen discrimination at work because of it or anything like that um not at work not at work I, i've been lucky at the fact a lot of it just comes from ignorance to be perfectly honest of yeah. like people being like well can't you just take that off like i've had wardrobe departments be like well can't you just take that off or or like, I'm like, I need to go to my trailer or the break room to get my, it, it, the hospital less so. Cause people obviously have Understand. some kind of a medical understanding, but, um, on set, I'm like, I really, I really need to go to my trailer. I really need to get, you know, my end pen. I, I got a bolus cause mm-hmm. I got to catch this before it gets too high. And there's like, Oh, we'll give it, give it 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then we'll take a break. And I'm like, I don't have 20, 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then there've been some dates that have been cut short because of, inappropriate questioning about how diabetes works with things so oh we have hey you know what better now than later jennifer we have entire episodes about how to do stuff like that while you have diabetes (laughs) so but i don't (laughs) i don't think i would bring it up with somebody on a first date that's for certain uh yeah well like i said it's weeded out a few people pretty quickly i've i've i say that all the time that if people are going to judge you or in any way hold you accountable for things that aren't your fault it's a good way to get rid of somebody quick and not have to, yeah. you know what I mean? Spend a bunch of time with yeah. somebody who's going to end up letting you down eventually anyway. So absolutely. Really Better cool. to get it out of the way before the entree. So do you find now that you understand type one so well that it's misunderstood in a hospital setting or are their goals just different in a hospital setting? I, I mean, I do think that there is room for improvement on education mm-hmm. um, because there's such a big, there, one of the things that I came across when I was being diagnosed was that the idea of like the traditional diabetic. And like you mentioned, like I was diagnosed later in life. And so it really threw people for a loop. Like I had a bunch of people going back and forth between type one and type two, just simply because of how old I was when right. symptoms started showing up. And um, so I think, I think sometimes they're too aggressive 
with treating certain things and not aggressive enough just because they, it, it's not their experience. They don't know um, what it's like. And so that's something that I really love being able to do is, is being a resource as a nurse of, of, you know, letting people know not only the experience of it and kind of what to focus on, what to not focus on, not that I'm an expert by any means, yeah. but I just have my own experience to pull from. Um, but you know, and then also too, like talking with other diabetic patients about what works for me, like I, the amount of times I've said, like, look, my in pen has been a game changer because I can use half units. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, it gives me, sorry, the cat's going to make a key. Oh, the cat's um, You're fine. <laughs> but, you know, and like, it gets me like the right dose at the right time and, and, and just gets me back to my day. Mm-hmm. And so finding the thing that not only treats diabetics when they're in DKA or hypoglycemic effectively, but also getting them on a routine in their day that helps them be consistent so that we don't get to those highs and lows. Okay. Um, hold on a second while I text my son who I told I was recording right now. Yes. I <laughs> it's okay. I had, I had somebody like come up on, on mine too, that I was like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Do you have a preferred method of eating? Do you intermittent fast? Do you eat lower carb? Do you eat like any specific way or not really? I try to do, um, lower carb, higher protein with, um, a good amount of fiber. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I find that fiber I'm super, like my cortisol levels are really sensitive. Um, like I was mentioning before and, and so I get insulin resistant pretty quick. Okay. And so fiber helps me. It's one of those like little tricks that really helps me to, um, to kind of combat any carbs, I kind of cut the carbs in half from the um, amount of fiber, or at least subtract the amount of fiber. Anyway, I won't get all into like the nitty gritty of yeah. that. But yeah, so I try to I try to just keep a pretty balanced as far as macro mm-hmm. um, diet, but I'm not, I'm not perfect. I definitely love a piece of cake every now and then. And, you know, nothing like bread and butter yeah, you know i, have to I love agree. a good piece of a piece of toast like i'm sorry like bread and butter is it's a classic for a reason yeah, it's I, really good I, I think i took a piece of uh bread the other day that was too thick toasted it i put butter on it and then sprinkled some like pink salt on top and my wife's like what are you doing i'm like this is my whole meal this piece of bread <laughs> i'm super That's excited beautiful. about it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um okay so I, I know you don't know this but my daughter's the one who has type 1 diabetes Uh, She was diagnosed when she was two years old. Like I said, she's 18 now. She just left for college. Things are going uh, really well with her stuff, which is is very cool. Um, Good. But I wonder, she's found, Arden has friends who have type 1 diabetes, but Mm -hmm. they're all virtual in one way or another. Like she doesn't know anybody in her real life who has type 1. And I'm wondering that once you become public about having diabetes and you have a social media presence already, what do you get out of that interaction? Because I find community to be uh, really important and not spoken about enough. I, I completely agree. It was yeah. something that I, when I was first diagnosed before I was um, open about it, because I was still figuring things out at the time. Um, I felt so alone. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I, I find. And it was part of the reason I got into nursing in the first place is I wanted to be able to help patients not feel alone in that time. Um, but yeah, I felt so alone of like, you know, try just the daily ins and outs, ups and downs that come with, with diabetes and having nobody understand that is such an isolating thing. And so I agree with you. Um, cause I found community, um, with fellow diabetics and it's, 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 it changes it because it helps you not only feel less alone in your day-to-day experiences, but also have this like resource of, Hey, this was what works for me. Does it work for you? Maybe Mm -hmm. you want to try it, that kind of thing. And that's been the biggest thing that I've really enjoyed about having diabetes on social media is two things. One, making like being perfect, not a thing, because like I said, being perfect with diabetes is very hard to do. Um, And like I said, there will be some days I joke, the sky is the wrong shade of blue. So my blood sugar is just going to be high today, you know? There's not, I, I will bolus and bolus and bolus and it just won't go down because, you know, it's just a bad day Right. Um, and making that more acceptable. Cause I think sometimes, you know, I've talked to fellow diabetics that are just really hard on themselves mm-hmm. um, that, and then also trading secrets, yeah. you know, that shouldn't be secrets. And like I said, you know, talking about the tools that work for us and, you know, do you know, Charlotte Drury, she's the gymnast. That name sounds vaguely familiar. She, oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah right. The, she's yeah. got type one. She dates 
Lori Hernandez. So I think Charlotte did trampoline in the Olympics and Lori, oh God, is something about gymnastics. But, <laughs> but, but Charlotte was on the show because she was having trouble with something with her diabetes. And she went on mm-hmm. to Instagram to talk to yeah. people about it. And one of the people mm-hmm. was like, hey, have you heard about this podcast? And yeah. so we started talking and then suddenly she was on the show and talking about her, her yeah. trip to diabetes. And I just think it helps people that it, it's a simple statement, like not to feel alone, but it, you know, it means so much more than that, really. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a lot more than, than how it seems. So I, I think it's really cool that you're connected. Do you, so do you get people reaching out a lot on social media yeah. that have type one? Yeah. A lot of people still don't know that I'm type one. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause to me, like I, I look at it this way. It's not who I am. It's a part of me. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, I think that's something that with, that I've talked to about other diabetics is this idea of like, Oh, that's who I am now. That's my label, you know? And it's like, no, that's just a part of who I am. It's a part of what I go through every day, but it isn't everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. And it's come full circle. Cause I actually found out about the in pen from the social internet. media. Yeah. yeah. yeah from yeah. the internet. And so from social media and, and it was a trade, it was a trade secret that somebody shared with me. Mm-hmm. Um, that like I said, is not really a trade secret, but, and so the, the fact that I'm able to now share that with other people of being like, Hey, this was a game changer for me. You know, it's worth yeah. looking into. We, we got a Dexcom for my daughter early on because somebody else that I knew that was in the diabetes space was talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. Arden uses a Pedra instead of the insulin she was given by the doctor's office because yeah. we were talking online and saying, Hey, we are seeing this problem. And one person said, you should try a Pedra. And I was, I was like, I didn't even know you could ask people for different insulins back. I was like, okay. So, you know, we gave that a yeah. try. Ended up being a really great thing. Um, yeah, so I can't agree enough. All right. You want to ask the stupid stuff now? Love it. Okay. Yes. Let's right. bring on the stupid. So <laughs> the first thing is partly for me, but it's going to lead us into the stupid stuff. Because I have an imagination okay. that this happens to you constantly. So you have a real vibe like my daughter does. So I'm, uh, I, I, I feel like I know how you're going to answer this, but... <laughs> <laughs> Out of every 10 people you meet who are not uh-huh. personal friends, how many of them bring up Selena Gomez? <laughs> um, a lot, a lot. If they're, if they're usually it, it starts with a few questions. They either want to sing the hat song, mm-hmm. which I love doing with people. I, I, it blows my mind that one episode, like people latched onto that. I think it's so cool. Um, if I kept any of the outfits and then am I, am I friends with Selena Gomez and my favorite response to that, I'll change it out. But my favorite response is like, no, she was CG'd into the whole show. I never met her, but like, cause it's so weird to me that people are like, do you know her? They love to ask that question. I'm like, I spent my whole high school, like right. age with her. <laughs> like, yeah. Of course I do. Like you, you, you would know, have, have to have this- honestly hated each other to not know any to, especially in the age of technology, when you can text people and keep in touch easily, like. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. so many questions, like I, I have a huge Facebook group and people were like, yeah. were they as friendly as they seemed on set? And I was like, well, if they weren't, would you expect her to tell me? Like, did- <laughs> <laughs> so Jennifer, was everybody we actually, horrible? We actually really yeah. were. Yeah. No, we actually really were. Like we were pretty inseparable um, during that whole shoot because like I said, we were, it was such a unique experience. Mm-hmm. So you kind of latch on to the people that are familiar and safe and, and that's what we were for each other. Um, at the time, because it was both, both of us were just kids who liked to act and we got on the show and, you know, and we got to do what we loved every day, which was amazing. But then all of a sudden people knew about it and knew who we were and, and that was different and strange. And so to be able to have somebody else that got that and to go through that with someone else was a really bonding experience. I would imagine, especially at your, you're at a certain age then too, like where I would mm-hmm. imagine friendships were very impressionable. Yeah. Yeah. Would really stick to you. Okay, so it's fair to say that if you texted her right now, she'd get back to you. That's what yeah, we're talking she about. Would. Okay, that leads me to my next question. This is a, a quote. <laughs> uh, it's from my daughter. Will you please start okay. a group chat with you and Selena Gomez and me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Selena may not appreciate that. She's not a big texter. She doesn't like texting that much. Like she, she'll FaceTime me um, or call me, and I hate the phone i hate it like Mm -hmm. i'm not a phone person i'm a texter all day so like sometimes we'll miss each other just because she doesn't want to text and i'm just like well i don't want to talk on the phone i'm not in a place where i can do that so i'll I'll let my daughter know that's a a maybe so uh, yeah (laughs) yeah there you go (laughs) it's hilarious the other question of course 
that everybody wanted was the hat song, which I'm not going to ask you to, um, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to sing, but what is it? Um, do you, and this is such a silly question. I feel like this is my first like weird showbiz question, but like, I'm so are, used to it. Don't even worry. Are about there it. things that happened while they were happening to you that you ever thought like, this will follow me for the rest of my life? Or are you surprised by the things that they are? I, I, I'm the thing is, and like, and the entertainment industry has so many examples of this, but when people try to make a thing, a thing, it never works. Yeah. Right. And when people are just organically creating, people will latch on to things. Why people latched onto the hot song. I have no idea. I love that they have. I think that that's so special, but I, I just came out of like the movie theater the other day. Um, I was going to see a movie and, and this girl comes up to me and she's like sobbing, sobbing, crying. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and of course my brain, I'm like, what happened? Are you okay? Yeah. Like, no connection in my brain between the two things. And she's like, I was raised on the hat song. And I'm like, what is that? That's what you're crying about. (laughs) Okay. Like, you know what I mean? It's really like, give me a hug. Like, that's awesome. But like, I don't know why you're crying about it. That's really sweet. Was it traumatic? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'm like, did it hurt you? Like, you know, it's totally. So, I mean, it's no, I, I would have never guessed. And like the outfits, like there's certain outfits that, if if you had asked me to guess like which one people are going to be crazy about, I would have never guessed the marker dress is the one that everybody always, and mm-hmm. I know you have no idea what I'm talking about, which is totally fine. Okay. But the marker dress is like this dress I wore that was like all markers. It weighed like 25 pounds because right. it was like a thousand like Sharpie markers or something. And, and, um, and it's, people love it. Yeah. People love that dress. And it was something I wore like one episode do you why they latched onto that one? I have no idea. Do you have a favorite? Like, is there something you think back on and think, I wish I still had this one? It changes all the time. Yeah. But I do have the marker dress. You do have it? I stole it. I stole it from set. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be a good I have one. a few outfits from set. Yeah. Everyone's like, I can't believe they let you keep them. I'm like, well, I didn't ask. Let me. <laughs> okay. I have to say when I, I, I ask for forgiveness. When right? I when I shot that commercial, the girl that dressed me, I mean, you can see me, Jennifer. I'm not like tall and lean and muscular and handsome and everything. And so like when the girls dressed me, I'm like, this is going to be horrible. I can't believe I agreed to do this. And little things she did with my clothes, like mm-hmm. rolling up my sleeves or something like that. I was like, why do I look so much better? Like, you're a genius. This is amazing. Yep. You know, uh, really, really kind of interesting how they could just, I don't know, make me see myself differently. Um well, and actors too, like you'll notice, like I have a lot of friends um, that are actors, obviously, but they um, they do not know how to dress in their regular lives. Right. <laughs> like if somebody's not like if like if they were like if they've they've I have some that have like worked very consistently since they were a kid and they've either have stuff that they've taken from set and that's what they look good in and they wear it over and over and over again. But if they have to dress themselves and go like to a store and pick something out, they're clueless. No idea what to do. Clueless. Yeah. Which I, I can't say like me now wearing scrubs all the time. Like I've, <laughs> I, I could, I could use some help on my day to day. I love a good sweat pant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so moving forward, as you, I'm assuming you're still going out and you said you're acting and doing things like, wh- do you have a goal for what you're trying to do? Are you just trying to work? Or is there something specific you want to do? Are you trying to use that sweet Disney influence to get into star Wars or Marvel or something like that? What's happening exactly? <laughs> Um, I mean, for me, I just love acting. I love telling stories. I love playing characters. It's important to me now having my experience with diabetes and and having that be such a part of who I am. You know, I do find it important that, you know, valid representation of diabetics and chronic conditions is out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I did an indie movie that I I co-wrote, produced and, and, co-started with a friend of mine during nursing school, actually, that really featured diabetes as what I was talking about before of, you know, it's not the whole character. Yeah. It's just part of them. Cause I think that's important. I, I, it's, it can be frustrating when you see it as this like melodramatic Julia Roberts, steel magnolias, like diabetes moment. And everyone thinks that that's just what you're like. And so for me, that representation is really important, but other than that, like it, it's, it's important to me to make people feel seen Mm -hmm. in both of my jobs as a nurse, as an actor. And, and the empathy that bridges between those two professions is very important to me. So whatever I can do and whatever stories I can tell and characters I can play that make people feel seen and heard, that's what's important to me. Yeah. All right. My last question is it's based off of, 
it's based off the 19,000 people that asked me if you know Nick Jonas, but <laughs> I'm not going to just directly <laughs> ask you that. But do you know other famous type ones? Like, are you I in do. some sort of a club I together? Do. Yes, we have a secret club. Mm -hmm. It's like Club 33 at Disneyland. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's it's because a lot of us are that are involved in like advocacy for diabetes. Uh, it's a small circle. So um, we we meet up. I mean, I, I, I met with a lot of different um, fellow diabetics um, to like ca uh, canvas is the wrong word, but basically to just like help fund more research for, you know, diabetes and, and, and products like the impen to, to, to help, you know, diabetics lives be easier and right. more seamless. And so, you know, we'll come together a lot, um, for things like that. And so that's, you know, kind of how we meet and it's pretty trade cool. stories. Well, I appreciate this very much. I thank you for doing this. Um, you said earlier that you don't know how many people know you have type one diabetes. I'm not bragging, but a lot of people are going to know now. So, uh, get ready. <laughs> Um, and I have something I want to tell you when I push stop, if you'll hold on for one second for me. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Thanks so much to Jennifer Stone for coming on the show today. And please find her on Instagram and TikTok, where you can enjoy her loveliness even more. I also want to thank Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor and remind you to go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box to find out if you're eligible for a free 10 day trial of the Dexcom G6. And of course, we're thanking InPen from Medtronic Diabetes, but we're talking about the Blue Balloon Challenge, which I'm going to continue to talk about as soon as the music ends. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you to go to InPenToday.com to support the podcast. Okay, first off, I was supposed to tell you that while you're on Instagram partaking in the Blue Balloon Challenge, you could also use the filter on Instagram, a filter on Instagram to take part in the challenge. I mean, that is well beyond my pay grade on Instagram, but to those of you who know how to use filters, apparently there's a Blue Balloon filter. Uh, go crazy. All right, listen. Life for a child. Like I said earlier, Medtronic is supporting life for a child. They're trying to work together to make a brighter future for people. They've currently supported 34,000 young people in 44 countries, providing essential supplies. In some under-resourced countries, children living with type 1 diabetes don't have access to life-saving insulin, blood glucose test strips, and diabetes education. Life for a Child partners with diabetes centers in countries like Tanzania, Mexico, and India to help young people with diabetes who have no other care available. So this is a great thing to do. You can use all the, you know, your apps, your gazentas and everything that you love where you gazenta them and put up a post and uh, do something easy and simple that will help somebody. Hashtag Blue Balloon Challenge and tag Medtronic Diabetes. Hey, check this out. I'm going through the literature they gave me. There's a small country in East Africa whose name I can't pronounce. It says that Life for a Child recently delivered a new A1C machine to a clinic. And the doctor that runs the clinic says that the machine has revolutionized the way he's been able to care for children. Now, that's something else. I mean, honestly, I'm going to get a blue balloon and try to hold it up. I'll do it, too. All right, I'll do it. You guys do it. I'll do it. Fair? All right, get a blue balloon. Balance it in the air. I'll balance it while I'm making the podcast. And, uh, and we'll all do it together. Blue balloon challenge hashtag tag Medtronic Diabetes. And find Jennifer Stone online, for God's sake. She's freaking delightful. Say hello to her. Tell her you heard on the podcast. All right, I'm going to go. But before I do, let me give you this link again. This easy-to-remember link. Medtronic Diabetes. Do, am I going to get in trouble for making fun of the link? Probably not. MedtronicDiabetes.com forward slash blue dash balloon dash challenge. Rolls right off the tongue. MedtronicDiabetes.com forward slash blue dash balloon dot challenge. Oh, uh, I got it wrong. I said dot. Okay. MedtronicDiabetes.com forward slash blue dash balloon dash challenge. There. Again, just type that in. Easiest pie. You'll learn everything you want to know about life for a child and the blue balloon challenge. And um, if anybody from Medtronic is listening, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, you could have put a link on inpentoday.com. And I could have just said, go to inpentoday.com and click on the link for the blue balloon challenge. But anyway, 
That's neither here nor there. Okay? Is that neither here nor there? Or neither here nor there? I don't know. Where do you think that saying comes from? Hold on. Seems like we're not quite done yet. Google will tell me. Oh, I just left the uh, Dexcom.com forward slash juice box and it tried to give me a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6. <laughs> okay. Neither here nor there. Origin. The phrase first appeared in Arthur Golding's 1574 translation of a collection of sermons by John Calvin. I don't know anything about this. The sermons of John Calvin upon, oh my goodness, Deuteronomy? Is that right? True, it is that are, oh boy, they talked all kinds of backwards in the 1500s. True is that are so doing is neither here nor there, as they say. Huh, Shakespeare used it too, in Othello. Act 4, Scene 3, Amelia and Desdemona are discussing marriage. While talking about husbands and the concept of fidelity, Desmedonia, emotional at the thought of what she's accused of, asks Amelia whether it is all right to cry. I'm going to cry if I keep reading this. Amelia, Amelia replies that it doesn't matter one way or the other to her. Here it is in context, Desdemonia. So, get, should I do a voice? So, no, I shouldn't do a voice. So, get thee gone, good night, mine eyes do itch. Doth that bode weeping. Hmm, doth that? Amelia responds, tis neither here nor there. What do you think of that? Hmm? What do you think of that? Scandalous. That's what I say. You guys think there's any chance Jennifer Stone listened to this and she's still listening and she's thinking to herself, why the fuck did I go on this podcast? Could be, right? Anyway, if you're listening, Jennifer, I had an absolutely delightful time speaking with you and you were invited back on whenever you want.